Good day, peeps. I'm Sheila Jean Berger, and welcome to Heart Talks. You know, in the old world, we're always trying to fit in. We're we're always trying to keep up with the Joneses, or or work really hard at being like everybody else, and. And sometimes in the old world, you're like forced to be like everybody else and, and to play along like everybody else and to, to gather and do the same things, okay? And, and I'm not saying that's wrong. It's normal for the old world, okay? But then something happens and you start waking up to your own world, to your, to your abilities, to yourself. And, and in that journey of, of discovering self and, and your abilities, everything changes in your life and and all of a sudden, that old normal doesn't look right anymore. It doesn't feel right. Some, for some reason, you're not blending in anymore. Okay? And you're coming to know, like, you're your own self now. And, and it takes some time as you learn to use those abilities and, and, and become accustomed to who you are, you know, normal is what you are. It's who we naturally are. Normal changes, all right? And that's just the progression. That's just the natural progression of this awakening process is that your normal is gonna change. Okay, <clears throat> today, <laughs> My guest, Ruben Garza, who is a return guest. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you. Uh, about eight years ago, he had a life-changing experience where he had to start from the beginning. He had lost all memory and all functions, and he started from the beginning. So he had people telling him what his normal is because he needed help to remember. At the same time, okay, here's why I love you. His abilities were shooting in. Okay, his real normal self yes. has just jumped in and he's got the conflict of people trying to help him remember who he is and him discovering who he really is. And we've been having this discussion about what is normal. And it's not that we've come to very much conclusion other than we want to share this information as others are awakening and, and finding that they're finding their new normal. And, and maybe we can all roll into this acceptance or adjustment into uh into what is our normal now yeah <sighs> reuben just briefly i mean how how conflicting it has been for you well as far as briefly is concerned i don't know that i can have a brief statement to say um, there are a lot of factors in everybody's life that, that drive that drive us in any given moment to make decisions, whether it's a good or bad, whether it's an imprint from our parents or from people around us. Um, but I certainly have uh, had one experience that I I never thought I would be having, or I never thought I would be in the place I'm in right, right now. Um, and it's not that I'm sad about it. Uh, I had to say goodbye to a lot. The old me, 
the way that I related to people, um, how I socialized, how I interacted with uh, work colleagues, with uh, family and friends. I, so most of them now, I, I don't even know that I associate with them very well. So there's a shift happening in my world as far as um, people that I want to surround myself with. Um, right. And um, not that they're bad, you know, you said that before, not that anybody's bad. Inherently, we're all good. Yes. Inherently, we all want to do good. But sometimes I know I, I'm not perfect. I make um, decisions based on what I know. Right. And now that I'm evolving as fast as I have over eight years, I've, I, I think I've averaged it into about um, maybe six or seven years per year that I've been awake. That's right. And it's been pretty intense because I know we talked about this before and it's okay to say here, I'm sure. Um, I know how everybody feels. I know how uh, children feel, kids or toddlers. I know how uh, teenagers feel with all those raging hormones. I know a lot about adults and how, uh, I mean, uh, what, uh, when you go through those teenage years and you're trying to find out who you are and everything and um, finding yourself uh, as a young adult, exploring what that is for you, your authentic self and saying, okay, well, this is who I am, and it doesn't fit into any type of norm that I know. So sometimes I go to people and I'm like, uh, I, I want to uh, relate to them, and I, I want to relate to them in the only way I know how, and sometimes um, it's a little weird for them. Because, you know, it's not like I go up to anybody and say, oh, by the way, <laughs> I see, I see, right, it's not like I do that. Um, <clears throat> But I think that everybody is trying to relate to me, and we're all learning. Right. I had a conversation with somebody that I've met 30 years ago, just recently came back into a lecture. I was like, I don't blame anybody. I'm trying to learn it as fast as I can, and if I remain that objective, objective like everyone else can as well, and know that we're all exploring and learning, uh, evolving as people. I just happen to have this thing that opened wide up. So is there a short version? Of, I don't know. There's, no, there's no short version of any of our awakening because there's so many details, yeah. so many little baby steps that we have to take to, uh, to get uh, through these these periods of, of transition. And, and I know for, for me, you know, when the awakening first started, I had never, I, it was just so, it was love that I'd never felt joy that I never felt before. It was, it was just, it was just epic. And I wanted to share it. I wanted to tell everybody about it and I wanted them to feel what I was feeling. And, those moments where, you know, they look at you like this or, you know, I've been in a crowd where I said something and all, the silence afterwards was deadly. Okay. And those are the times, those are the times of great struggle for some to adjust to not needing that external understanding. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see what you mean, and I, I think that's very true. Um, I've been um, doing the best I can to learn everything I possibly can about every subject and still do. But there are times when you know the whole thing, the, even in the military, they say, get a buddy, have a friend that you can totally relate to and that has your back. And, and I, I think the best part of people um, – they're trying to relate, but something really big happened. I, I can't explain that. It's a multitude of things, like you said. Um, so it kind of weirds people out. So the subject a lot has to stay on the weather or how's your family? <laughs> What's going on in your world? How is work? And that's it. But other metaphysical topics, if, if it gets too, too much, Either people try to understand or they get a little frustrated with it. And I, and I know how that feels. I'm telling you, I know how that feels more than anybody else in the white world. Right. 
I wish there were an easy way, but we we talked about there's no school, none for for it. And so the best um, I can do is know when my body is reacting, know when my sleeping patterns are, are messed up, knowing when um, I have a headache or when there's something that's not right, then it's part of the shift that's happening. Right, right, right. Well, for, for you know, people who are, are just coming into this awakening state, you know, I mean, the reason why we're having these shows is to say, look, you're, you're not alone. And we are gathering and we are living our lives in our new worlds with our new normals. Okay. And we can share these stories and we will encourage you to know your normal and not try so hard to be um, we were, we were talking about how there was a phase where, where, uh, you know, here's, here's the old world. And then there's this phase where you're finding your abilities, you're finding yourself, but you're still associating with the old world. It's just normal. Okay. And, and, and so there's this period of adjustment. And then as you keep moving forward, you you get to a point where you begin to embrace yourself you are normal okay and i think that's when service kicks in because that's the point when you're not concerned anymore about how i think it's more like you can acknowledge where everybody's step is yes okay and there's that comes from compassion it's like, I know how you feel. I know it's weird for you. I, I know it's weird for me. It's, uh, but normalizing something that's obviously taking place. It, it's what I, what we talked about to a degree that, um, that said, uh, you know, I'm going through this right now. And if it's happening to me, it's going to happen to you. It's going to happen to all of us. So what, you know, we become, we become default teachers. Right. By experience, experiential knowledge, I, I can do all these things. I told you, I really don't know what I'm doing. I just have to do it. And um, right. that's how we become that light for other people. And setting the example, uh, sometimes being uh, that example when there's no manual, there is no manual. And um, doing that is kind of uh, weird sometimes for people who... who are closed right right mm. you know it was always it was always taught to me that uh the greatest gift that i can give to the world is by is through my example and i have i have uh i have children who are watching me it makes it pretty easy to be a good example when you know that these growing kids are 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 watching and, and I am making an impression on them and I and especially with the show now I I'm able to um, voice more clearly and more freely uh, uh, what it's like to be in this new world, what it looks like from this new world, what it feels like from the new world. And, um, and then to, you know, to have the response that we're getting from these shows. That's true. Um, I wanted to add something regarding the way our children are being the new world for the, for the children coming in. Um, back at, I believe in the, when women's when women were getting the right to vote, and back when uh, there's a big thing right now going on about Selma, um, the march and stuff. That's that seems abnormal to our children now. How could we possibly? How could that have happened? I look at stuff in history, uh, on on YouTube, and I was like, how could that have happened? Hitler seems weird to me. Right. Let that we let it all happen. 
So um, being able to even say that there are all types of people, whether we're black or white or any sexual preference or anything like that, um, it should not matter. And the way we teach our children now, it's gonna, it's like technology. They're gonna catch on to it. They're gonna think nothing of it. While we, while we're struggling, they're like, oh, well, come on, that's nothing. That's and nice. it's, it becomes that genetic imprint or that imprint to say, this is not bad. None of it's bad, none of it's weird. Um, but I think the adults are having the hardest time because of look, look at what we've been, look at, look at our place in history right. where we've had all these struggles with human rights and female, you know, even get the basic stuff, getting the right to vote. How is that? I look at that and I'm like, what? Yeah. And that wasn't that long ago. <laughs> yeah. Like when, when did slavery end? Um, when was it slavery in like, when did that end? Yeah. Uh, yeah maybe 1800s or something. Uh, I don't think it has yet. I mean, as far as uh, like African Americans being right. right. And then using, um, scripture. Yeah. People use, it's just, it blows my mind away the other day. Um, well, it was yesterday. As a matter of fact, I saw, uh, something on Facebook about Pat Robertson saying that, uh, we are teaching our children, uh, something he was like oh do not pay attention to this because it teaches our children to hate or that it's from the devil and i'm like pat don't you think that what you're doing is kind of bad mm -hmm. uh, people can are so willing or so eager to project that stuff out but they cannot see their own i say their own pain right their own prejudice with, with what it means and that's what it boils down to it's it's amazing to see that stuff now and, and maybe in 10, 20 years, it won't exist when our children grow up. Right. But it, you're right, setting the example as adults. But are we really adults when we do that? Well, yeah. And, and <laughs> so here I am, you know, trying to set an example. And I'm learning about myself. I'm, I'm, right. I'm learning with every step of the way and and my normal keeps changing and so as far as my kids go you know i i really try to keep it simple and i try to keep it honest and most of all i try to listen to them because man kids are a rough right they know nobody, nobody will listen to them nobody thinks their opinion counts nobody's you know <laughs> They have to do what they're told, you know, to be a good kid. I, you know, I homeschooled my kids. I, I'm quite the rebel. I was going to do it my way and I don't regret a moment of it. And, and I'm, you know, I, I just, it's just because I have this, you know, this love for kids and, and want to. I want to give them the freedom to learn who they are since we had to wait so long. Right. So I I want them to learn right away. And it's such a joy to be able to have an opportunity to have those experiences and 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 let them know that who they are is normal. Unique. We're all individual. We're all unique. We're all divinely guided by something in us to give or we're all part of this world right yeah. we're all part uh it's just um i i kind of I'm, I'm stumped by the whole topic a lot of times because i normal for me is obviously not normal for you right right but my normal is just different that's right and normalizing it for me means uh different things like I have to go to the gym, I have to meditate as much as I can. And but for somebody else, they may not be able to do they may they may not have to do that. Some people that like yoga. Right. Some people like uh running. running. Yeah. Yeah. So um and even I believe that even like uh the body holds a certain frequency. Mm -hmm. So we're all operating on different frequency. That's right. And so we're all different, but it's 
it's been kind of interesting to see how um, when I first woke up, people's normal was different than mine. And I, um, they wanted me to, it was, it's kind of tragic, but there's some very funny moments, like the time I tried on uh, skinny jeans weighing 200 pounds. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty funny. Uh, that wasn't normal. <laughs> that was <not> normal. <laughs> no, it looked, it did not look normal <laughs> at all. It is quite funny, though. <laughs> the whole thing of, you know, since there are so many different kinds of people, there are so many different ways of living and being. So I I wanted to believe, I want to believe, I have to believe that everybody was doing their best of what they knew of was right. That's right. But then as we mature, we figure out, oh, my God, this is really me. And society says, be your authentic self. Be who you are. Uh, be who you're made to be. And then, you know, who you are will be a unique signature in the world. That's right. That's right. So I, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, so in, this, in this new world, we embrace each other's normal. In fact, we are excited for each other's normal to be discovered. And now we get, because of these, these radio stations and all the technology we've got going here, we're able to share what our normals look like so that when others are beginning to wake up to the, their normals. You say, guess what? I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's normal. That's normal. You're doing just a great job at being you. Well, this is, this is, you know, I, I, I think in every show, somehow or another, it slips in how uh, in the new world, uh, uniqueness is embraced. Yes. And, uh, and I'm sure that every show that we have is going to end up saying the same thing. And we're going to say it over and over and over again. And we're going to show as many ways as we can of this awakening process and try to be very honest about it, that there are, it's not, it's not exactly a smooth road. No, it's, no, it's not. No, it's not. And, and that's where our, our networking of support here is just so valuable. It's priceless because making a safe place for each of us to share our normals, that is a gift. Yes, and I, I really appreciate the talk. I really do. It's um, Hopefully this will... Uh, kind of uh, help open a lot of people's eyes that there are especially men you know, because men are kind of yeah. yeah and I don't know what that is yet but I appreciate what y'all are doing I really do well thank you Ruben I love you and thank you for having the courage to share like this and I look forward to all of our conversations thank you again all right folks well I hope you got something out of this I hope you've enjoyed it and um, thank you all for tuning in um, you've made this just happen the ripple is getting bigger we're doing a great job so from my heart to yours namaste, namaste.